Welcome back to the Quantum Field Theory Basic Series. Finally, you've come to the video that will tell you what a quantum field theory is. First, we're going to talk about what a field is, and then we'll talk about what a quantum is. The word field was popularized by Michael Faraday in the 1800s when he was trying to explain his concepts for the electric and magnetic forces. The word is a reference to the fields on a farm, like a wheat field. The wheat fills the entire field, much like electricity and magnetism seem to fill empty space. Faraday used iron filings to show the magnetic field extending out past the magnet. That mystified the crowds at the Royal Society. It doesn't fit with most of our basic experiences. Our basic experiences are misleading because they indicate an object and empty space model of the world. Following Faraday, James Clerk Maxwell figured out how to code the whole field idea with mathematics. The field idea was set down as Maxwell's equations, a wildly successful theory. That was one of the great turning points in human history. Mathematically, the electric field takes on a value at every point in space, as does the magnetic field. Other types of fields are the temperature in the room you're sitting, or the wind outside. To describe the wind, you need three numbers at every point in space and time. Temperature requires one number for every point. The electric field requires three numbers, and so does the magnetic field. Fields can overlap. So, for instance, the magnetic field can be at the same place as the temperature field. If they don't interact, then nothing happens. If they do interact, then you get interesting stuff. We call it physics. So, for instance, when the wind field interacts with the temperature field and the gravity field, we get weather. Quantum field theory is going to build on the idea of fields to create the standard model, the secret theory at the core of physics. It will turn out that about six fields are normally used in the standard model. However, there can be as many fields as you want, and the fields you use can vary with what you're describing. So, for instance, we originally described the world in terms of magnetic fields and electric fields. Eventually, we learned that these are different aspects of the same field, the electromagnetic field. In the 1960s, we learned that you can group the electromagnetic field with the weak field to form the electroweak field. The goal is to describe everything in terms of a single field. What does the quantum part mean? The answer to this question is actually very subtle. Let me illustrate with the temperature inside the cover of this barbecue. Every point inside has a temperature. We call it a temperature field. Back in the old days, we had thermometers like this one to measure the temperature. As the barbecue heats up, the thermometer swings through all the temperatures between room temperature and the temperature inside the barbecue. That's the old way of measuring temperature. We call it analog. Now we live in the digital age, and we use thermometers like this one. It reads out the temperature in one degree increments. When you insert it in the barbecue, the temperature only shows integer values. The measurements are quantized. That's what is meant by the quantum part of quantum field theory. It's not that the field is quantized, but the measurements are quantized. Physicists actually like to use another word instead of measurements. They like to say interaction. Thus, the interactions are quantized in quantum field theory. When fields interact, integer numbers of field quanta are created and annihilated. It's like nature only uses digital thermometers. For most of ordinary life, we don't notice 
the digital nature of the world. It gets smoothed out because the digital counts are very small at low energies. The digital nature shows up when the energy levels are raised. Max Planck was the first one to notice this when he was trying to solve the mystery of black body radiation. Classical smooth ideas worked well for the low energy part of the spectrum, but completely failed in the high energy ultraviolet region. It was the ultraviolet catastrophe. To fix it, he created the quantum hypothesis, and it worked beautifully. Even with this success, Max Planck continued to think the quantum hypothesis was a gimmick. Over the next 50 years, the gimmick proved useful in explaining more and more experiments. By 1950, his gimmick had been used in so many experiments that it became a basic principle of physics, the quantum principle. There is one other parallel that you can get from the digital thermometer analogy. As we know from the laws of thermodynamics, there is such a thing as absolute zero. You can't measure a temperature below absolute zero. What does that correspond to in quantum field theory? The answer to that question is the vacuum. The vacuum is the starting point, and it is assumed in quantum field theory. There is always a positive number of quanta in the field. You can't go below absolute zero, and you can't go below the vacuum. So let's try making these ideas precise with mathematics. First, you need a starting point. Let's see, what would be a good starting point? Oh, I know, the vacuum. We will represent that with a zero to show that zero field quanta are in the vacuum. Physicists like to put some special brackets around it to make it into mathematics. Now our measuring instrument can only show integers. How are we going to enforce that requirement? We invent a mathematical operator that creates one quanta at a time. We'll call it the creation operator. And it does something like this. That's a state with one quantum in it. States with more quanta come from additional operations with the creation operator. The opposite of the creation operator is the annihilation operator. When it acts on a state with one quantum, you get the vacuum. The math will come by forming the fields out of combinations of creation and annihilation operators. That will guarantee that you get a theory with only integer numbers of interactions. Those of you that have studied quantum mechanics recognize this as Dirac's notation for Hilbert space math. What's new is that the number of field quanta is allowed to increase and decrease. In quantum mechanics, you have a fixed number of quanta. That's why quantum mechanics has trouble describing processes like this one where a single quantum becomes several quanta. These are common processes, and they show a major difference between quantum field theory and chemistry. In chemistry, you start with a definite number of atoms, and you end up with the same number of atoms. Let it be known that quantum field theory is not chemistry with smaller particles. Of course, there's a lot more to the mathematics of quantum field theory. I hope to get around to explaining it all, but in the next video, I'm not going to introduce more math. I'm going to talk about the experimental successes of quantum field theory. They're awesome.